Hey everyone, this is Corey with Align Therapy, and as always, we're thinking about scoliosis a lot with our treatment and how to make it better and how we can better educate. And um, I've been doing a lot of learning and relearning about the grading system that a lot of physicians and radiologists will use for tracking growth in adolescence to try and stay on top of the scoliosis curve growth pattern. And that typically corresponds with, with teenagers, um, occasionally juveniles, but uh, yeah, it's around this time or after the summer that I'll get parents that come in and they say, man, my child looked normal straight back a few months ago and then something happened over the summer and here I am with 25, 35, 40 degree curve and I don't know how it happened. And we're going to talk about that today and um, some of the different scales that are used and potentially one that's better. So and what I have in front of me is a diagram depicting eight different stages of growth in the hand. And this is used to help measure what's called a, or determine a Sanders score. And it goes from one through eight. And eight means the hand is completely closed, which typically means that the patient or the person has achieved skeletal maturity. And here is a picture of a radiograph with a hip, or rather the pelvis. You can see the top of the pelvis on either side of the spine, and in this diagram they depict uh, the Risser score and how that is measured. On the left-hand side it's divided into fourths, and on the right-hand side it explains what a Risser 0 and a Risser 5 and how they potentially look pretty darn similar um, to the untrained eye. And what we found is that a lot, a lot of uh, determination on whether a patient should be in a brace or stop being in a brace um, or when to start treatment uh, lives and dies on this Risser score. And what I've been learning is that that may not be the best thing. Um, and we'll talk about why. Because the big deal is this. This is a chart for both males and females. Pink is female. Blue is male. <clears throat> and what we're looking at is the peak height velocity over a number of years. On the left hand side it starts at age 2 on the x-axis and goes to age 20. And on the left y-axis the bottom is 2 centimeters and the top is 10 centimeters and what it's saying is at least for girls, if we take a look at girls, their peak height velocity is around 12, 13, 14 years old. Meaning that that is usually when scoliosis is progressing at its quickest. Over here at boys, same thing, but a little bit later. We know that boys tend to grow a little bit later on the timeline. So for them, their peak velocity is 14, 15 starts to drop off at 16. And these are averages. It could very well be that, and, and we've seen girls in the clinic certainly where um, maybe their growth is different. It's earlier, maybe it's a little later. And, but these are useful guides for directing how we should approach treatment. And the problem is, going back to the RISR, a lot of times, we'll get kids that are RISR zero, which means that we don't see any capping on the, on the iliac crest for a number of years, yet they're growing and their scoliosis is progressing. Or we get them and they say they're RISR four, 
Eryser 4 means that they must be done slowing down their growth. And what we found through recent studies is that doesn't always identify the most amount of people. In fact, it can be worse than the flip of a coin using this staging. What Risser, or sorry, what Sanders provides us is an earlier opportunity and window to better uh, treat those that are in their growth spurt or starting to go in their growth spurt. So let's look at these. Risser 1. We're going to pay attention mostly to the digits. There are three phalanges in each digit. One metacarpal in each hand for each finger. Those digits have caps on the bottom of them. Right here at the bottom of this first digit, right here at the bottom of this other digit, and right here at the bottom of this last phalange. Metacarpals here. Here's the epiphysis and the metiphysis, or the medial shaft and the end cap. Okay? That's what we're looking at to determine a Sanders score. Here's, number, here's uh, Sanders score 2. And what we see is that these caps on the digits are starting to cover these metiphyses. But the epiphyses are the caps on the metacarpal. They're not yet as wide or wider than the metacarpals. And that's huge because right here in Sanders 3, the epiphyses on these four metacarpals are now wider. This corresponds to the peak height velocity for adolescents. So, in our opinion, this is the beginning of the growth spurt. This is the beginning of what could be progression for the curve, for the scoliosis curve. This is more useful than a RISR zero, because a RISR zero can occur for three, four, and possibly five in some cases which doesn't allow us a window into when we should be doing our exercises more if you're practicing the Schroth method or really being diligent about being in your brace if you've had a hard time with that. Being aware of your posture during the day. This allows us to essentially have a better crystal, crystal ball in predicting when we need to really work hard on what our health team has asked of us to try and reduce the risk of progression. Now, down here, at Sanders 6, this is when the epiphyses are starting to fuse. Okay, right here they're capping. The digits are fusing, but here the metacarpals are starting to fuse here at this cap. And that is the start of the plateau. That is what corresponds to a RISR 4. And in any anyway, this is a video for practitioners. It's a video for um, patients that wish to be more informed about the decisions that your health team is making and why getting x-rays every three to six months is on the agenda and why that's important. Um, it, sure, it, it definitely helps us understand if what we're doing is working for trying to halt or improve the scoliosis curvature. Um, but if we're not taking if we're not taking an x-ray of the hand, then we may be losing important opportunities 
to better tailor the treatment plan to you. Um, solely relying on one part of the body that has been shown in research to, to not be as effective with predicting uh, growth patterns um, just doesn't seem like forward thinking. And this isn't even, Sanders and Risser aren't even the only scales for measuring progress. Um, but Risser is looking like it's kind of at the bottom of the barrel and it's certainly easy because we only need to do one x-ray and that's less radiation. Absolutely, there's a case to be made for that. We're exposing our kids to a lot of radiation through their growing years, which is concerning. But there are better methods for reducing x-ray exposure with better technology. Um, there are machines now um, that emit low dose radiation. It's still there, but it's definitely a lot better than it used to be. And uh, the surgeons around here, uh, one team will just have the kids raise their hands while they're taking the scoliosis uh, x-ray and they measure the sanders there, but others don't do that and they end up just using Risser and we fear that maybe um, the treatment just could be better. The, 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 there's an opportunity cost to not doing uh, what may be best practice, which uh, could include doing a Sanders score. So anyway, this, this video, um, kind of a rant, but also hoping to educate on the usefulness of uh, two scales that have been around for a really long time, but for whatever reason, one has been more prevalent, and it, I think it just comes down to the ease of it talking about the RISR score and the, the decreased uh, exposure for our kids to, to radiation. But I believe that there may be an opportunity cost there. And if um, you aren't sure how those decisions are being made for your child or for your patient, then I would investigate that and see what is being used to determine their growth, uh, where they are at their growth, and trying to predict better when growth will start to slow down or when it's at its peak. So hopefully this video was helpful. Um, we'll have more like this coming and uh, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.